All right, without any further ado, here's Kyle O'Brien from Samsung. Hey, thank you very much for the great introduction. Uh, we're going to talk, uh, as I said, about all the new and exciting new things from uh, Samsung in 2019 uh, for the TVs. Um, so this is going to be definitely geared more towards the integration aspect of our products. Um, so without, uh, you know, putting a lot of, uh, you know, delay in it, let's uh, let's just jump right into it and uh, and get it get into it. Um, so when we talk about uh, with a with our TVs, um, who are we really looking to sell these TVs to? Um, when we are looking at our uh, upper-end TVs, our Q900, our Q90s, a lot of times these are going to be more geared towards our early adopters. Um, you, these are very generalized statements. Um, doesn't mean that you know anybody that's coming in isn't going to be geared towards uh, this TV or another TV, but in general terms, um, a lot of the customers that come in looking for the Q900 and Q90 are those early adopters that want the latest and greatest and want that cutting edge technology that says, you know, what's that, that TV that's the, the newest on the cutting edge of technology? And that's oftentimes where we're going to see someone that's going to be purchasing that Q900 or that Q90 TV because they're going to see that 8K resolution be like, all right, that's the newest and latest and greatest thing because I've never seen that before. This is the first time anyone's ever seen a TV like that. No one else on down the street from me has that TV, so I've got to have that. Someone that wants to look at the Q70 or Q80, they still want that great performance. They want that high-end TV, but maybe they don't want to quite spend as much as what the Q90 and Q900 is, but they like that great performance aspect of it. So that's where the Q70 and Q80 come into play. Now for the custom integration world, the Q7 and Q80 also don't include the One Connect box. The inputs are just going to be on the TV itself. The Q9 and Q900 will have the One Connect box with them. Um, so I will say that that's going to be one of those things that you guys do tend to lean towards more often and not just for the integration aspect of it. Um, but there are solutions for the 90 and 900 to make them integrationable, uh, whether it be longer cables or even back boxes and such to, to conceal the One Connect box. Uh, below that, you're going to have more of the value-minded customers that are really looking for a great solution for a good product, which is what we offer with the RU8, which would be more of a step up from our entry-level product, will be the RU7, or the Q60, which is going to be our stepping stone to our QLED products, which is going to be what we offer that 100% color volume, that quantum dot technology that's going to provide that great color that great bright HDR experience for the consumer. And then finally, that cord cutter experience that is gonna be found on the RU7. This is where that customer that wants to get that best bang for their buck, and it's just gonna be for, you know, maybe that second or third bedroom of their house. Maybe they wanna give that customer an experience of Netflix that, you know, maybe they have a customer that's coming in, or they have a guest that's coming to their house, and they want to have a second bedroom and they want to let their, their guests watch Netflix in their bedroom and the, but they don't want to spend five thousand dollars on a TV for that secondary bedroom or third bedroom this gives them that solution or maybe they have a secondary home that uh, you know it's something they're just at for the weekends when they're fishing on a lake um, this is a good solution for that secondary option um, it is also a value-minded piece to where it's going to be something you'll see in a lot of advertisements um, at a good price point. And then finally, you'll see that design-centric piece with the serif and the frame. The frame is that the uh, the TV that we all know and love. Um, I actually have a frame in my bedroom. Uh, I very much enjoy it. I have a white bezel on around it. Um, it's one of my favorite TVs on the market. I just am... A little bummed that they now offer it in a QLED uh, because I didn't buy it. Uh, now, I bought it a little while ago, but it's all right because now our customers get the benefit of having QLED within the TVs. Uh, the Serif, obviously, as well, offers QLED capabilities. It's more of a freestanding piece, whereas the frame is more of a uh, on-wall type of piece. So that's a great benefit for customers this year. They do get the benefit of purchase in a TV with QLED. So now it's not a debate between, do I want to get a great picture quality or do I want to get a great design um, element TV? It's both all in one. 
So when we talk about new and exciting features for 2019, um, we have a lot of different things that kind of come into play when we look at them. We, we mentioned uh, the Q900 and the 8K. We offer this in a lot of different sizes. So it comes in a 65, 75, 82, 85, and even a 98 inch screen size. So that early adopter or the person that wants that new latest and greatest technology can get it in whatever size they want. And it comes in all these sizes to make sure that it fits in whatever space they want it in. And speaking of those large sizes, we offer those big screens for those customers. Big screen size is the trend. 75 inch and up is a big deal nowadays. Customers are looking for larger and larger screen sizes. So we're offering that within Samsung. We have 15 models within our lineup that are 75 inch or larger. We offer a 75 inch all the way from an RU7 to the Q900. We offer an 82 inch and a RU8 series all the way to the Q900. And even on top of that, we offer four models with a direct full array lighting system. So because we have all these different models that offer great picture quality, we wanted to enhance that picture quality even more by providing that direct full array capability, which is gonna give better contrast and better HDR experience to them. And as I mentioned, that new style focus with the serifs and the frames are gonna provide that great picture quality because they offer QLED in them this year, and it's just going to give that design element that's just going to be different than anything they've ever seen before. For that customer that doesn't want a TV in their room, but still wants the capability of being able to see a TV in their room, this is a great solution for them. So let's talk a little bit about QLED and 8K. So as I mentioned, we do have it in 65, 75, 82, 85, and 98 inch screen sizes. So it is a size that is available for everybody. Now, one of the big questions we always get is, there's not a lot of 8K content out there. And that's okay, because when we look at these super big screens that customers are purchasing, we're noticing that we're not making these rooms that they're going into bigger and bigger. So the screen sizes keep going larger and larger, but the rooms aren't getting bigger and bigger. So we're sitting closer and closer to really large screens, which means the pixels are getting much larger, but we're not sitting farther back from them. So we're starting to see that screen door effect again, like we saw back in the day with you know 1080 sets, um, when we were really looking to get to the larger screen size. When we started going from 55 to 65, we saw that screen door effect that started to come into play. That's where 4K really kind of came to its limelight. Uh, now that we're getting into 8K resolution, this is where this can really come into play for those larger screen sizes that give us that higher resolution when you're sitting close to the displays and we can raise that PPI so that you're not noticing in the individual pixels on the display. We have over 33 million pixels on the display that shows crisp and clear images no matter what you're watching. We're going to be able to upscale to such great details within the images to make sure that you're going to be able to watch things in near to perfect light um, and colors in detail like you would like, like you're in lifelike situations now part of the way part of the reason we do that or able to do that is because of the ai upscaling we offer within these tvs last year with the 8k tv we introduced the ai upscaling which meant we could update the upscaling algorithms within the tvs now, we've taken that down to the 4K sets this year, but our 8K sets continue to do that. So what that means is the TV continuously learns and continuously gets better at doing upscaling. So yeah, the TV looks great today, but tomorrow it's gonna get better. And two years down the road, it's gonna continuously get better at the way it does upscaling. So that TV that the customers are typically buying every six, eight, and 10 years is, not going to be something that's going to be obsolete for them um, when they're buying 4K sets when 8K technology is really a thing that's coming really quickly. The next Olympics are going to be recorded in 8K. The next PlayStation has already announced that they're going to do 8K gaming. So these things are coming fast. 5G technology is already setting the bar that, that 8K technology is going to be something that's going to come and it's going to come fast. 
So the way the 8K AI upscaling works is we have a big supercomputer in Korea that its job is to simply process information. All it does is read content daily. It breaks down the content by what you're watching, and it breaks down all that content down to little tiny boxes, so it really breaks it down to individual pieces of that content. So if you see a, like a, a scene with a bunch of things on it, it'll say, okay, I'm noticing grass here, I'm noticing a car there, I'm noticing an airplane here, I'm noticing a building there. And it takes each one of those individual objects and learns how it can upscale those better. And it creates new formulas on the ways it can upscale that better from both low resolution and mid resolution and high resolution to create it to as close to 8K without being in full resolution to begin with. Um, and it creates new formulas for that. It compiles those into new formula banks. And as we get enough formula banks, we will then upload those to the processor on the TV and that's why it's considered an AI processor because we're continuously embedding new upscaling algorithms to that processor and giving it more information. Currently, there's over 8 million different upscaling algorithms on the TV, and as we get more uh, available, we'll continuously upload those to the TV itself. Now, the next thing we talk about is contrast because this is a big story for Samsung. Um, we do contrast in many ways. Uh, one of the big ways is with our direct full array. So this is a technology where we light from directly behind the TV, much like you have a uh, flashlight lighting from behind this, this moon here on the screen. So we have uh, kind of represent, representing the three of the, the different models of full array we offer here. So let's just say this first one here would be the Q70, this one here would be the, the Q80, and this is the Q90 here. As we get better down the line, you get more dimming zones, which is going to give us better control. So if we were to take a look at this moon up here on this screen here, these blocks that are going to be behind it would have more control. So we would have less of a chance of having any type of halo around this moon when we do this by having more dimming blocks on, say, the Q90 than the Q80. The Q70 obviously would have less dimming blocks than the Q80 itself. Now, when we pair that with the fact that Samsung uses an anti-blooming technology that eliminates the blooming that goes around the moon, so it creates more of a defined edge, that anti-blooming technology is what makes sure that we have that defined, uh, defined line to give us that deeper black level and provide that really good gradient color that we're really looking for. So in this bottom picture on the left side, you'll notice that on this wood line here, you can see that the left picture doesn't have a very good defined wood line. You'll see on the right side, you can see the defined wood line, as well as if you look in the sky, the colors don't have a much better gradients to them because of the fact that we're using that anti-blooming algorithm that shows that. Uh, deeper black level because of that. Get off the pointer here. All right. And the other thing that we're going to be offering with that's going to improve that contrast is the new panel design that you're going to find within the Q80, the Q90, and the Q900. Now, one of the things that you'll know is that Samsung uses a VA panel or a vert vertically aligned panel. Um, it's just the type of panel we use. Um, there's a lot of really great things with a VA panel. Um, it gives great contrast, gives great motion, gives great colors. But one of the flaws on, with a VA panel is it tends to have a little bit of color shift as you sit at a far off access view. Now, we've done some things to improve that. And one of the things we've done is completely change the design of the panel with this ultra viewing angle. So we've added two new layers to it to improve this. So that way that someone that's sitting on the far left and the far right side of these TVs from the Q80, Q90, and Q900 don't suffer from that color shift you would on other types of VA panels. We have a light concentration layer, which is going to basically focus that light to make it go through each individual pixel that we want it to. And then a uniform light separation layer that will evenly spread the light that comes off the panel 
to make sure that each seat in the room gets the, the color dispersed just the way it was intended to. So that way we don't have that color shift as we have in the past. So these two things combined gives us a much better viewing angle on the TV without suffering any contrast or motion uh, effects by using a different type of panel um, that we, we may use to try to get a better viewing angle. The other aspect is using an ultra black panel or an anti-reflectivity technology called ultra black elite. What this does is allows you to absorb that ambient light versus reflecting it back out into the room. The ultra black elite is by far one of my favorite technologies we've, we've used in the, the TVs. Um, it's something we've used for a few years now, but we've just continued to evolve it and continue to get better. That's why it's part of a new panel design, because we just involved it and continue to make it better. Um, I've got a, a couple year old Q70, uh, and it's, you know, and it continues to get better, but my version's even pretty good. Um, I used to watch TV on a B750 LCD, which was a really good LCD TV back in the day. However, I have a bunch of windows in my living room. I have a big sliding glass, glass back door in the other side of my room. And then I've got my front door and I've got a couple skylights in my living room. So every time my wife came home from work, she would see all the windows and all the doors shut with all the curtains closed because I always wanted to watch TV and I wanted to get a good picture. So I'd have to close everything to be able to see it because otherwise I'd have glare on my screen. With the Ultra Black Elite, I can now watch TV in my living room with all my windows, all my doors open, all my curtains open, because it allows me, my TV can absorb that ambient light versus reflecting it out. And I tell you what, the best way to demo this is literally just turn off the TV and look into the TV, because you can notice how little reflects out of the TV uh, when the TV is off. And it works especially well if you have a Q80, Q90, Q900, next to a Q70, 60, or an RU series TV um, next to it, because you can compare it, and it's a night and day difference. And this is probably one of those big upselling features you can get for a customer that has that type of room where they wanna be able to watch TV, uh, and they don't have a way to control the lighting in the room. Because let's face it, most customers don't have the ability to control the lighting in the room at all times of the day. Sure, at nighttime, it's pretty easy to control the lighting in the room. You just turn the lights off. But during the day, most people don't want to watch TV in a dungeon, unless you're like me. Uh, but if you're not like me, uh, you, you like to have natural light coming in the room or you watch TV in the basement. Uh, so that's a good feature to really be able to showcase and highlight to those customers. The next thing we like to talk about is our quantum dot technology. This allows our TVs to really shine when it comes to colors. Samsung still is the only company I know of that offers 100% color volume when it comes to TVs. And our quantum dots are utilized in our backlighting technology that gives us a more pure white light source. The more pure you get that light source, the more accurate your colors can become. Because we have more accurate colors, we pair those with a TV that shines over a billion shades of colors, it gives us 100% color volume. And color volume is a hard thing to really kind of understand. So I'm gonna to try to show you in these two images here. So if you look at the images on the right and take a look in this little bin right here. So this should be yellow all the way across this, this here. However, if you notice in the middle, it tends to turn to white in the middle because when it gets to a very bright aspect of that, the, the, the yellow tends to turn to white. And that's what TVs that can't hold color volume do. When they get to a very bright scene, they turn to white to try to highlight a very bright color. However, if you look at the QLED up here, and in that same area where it's trying to show yellow, it still shows yellow all the way down. And we'll go ahead and remove all those lines so you guys can see what all is going on in those two areas and actually be able to see that there's difference between the gradations in the colors there. And you can see how much more natural the colors look because it's 100% color volume versus something that can't hold colors in those bright scenes. And that is a big differentiator for us because 
all lot of content is moving to that bright area and moving to those bright highlights and those bright poppiness. Uh, and we can tell that by the fact that there's over 70 titles now that are being mastered in over 4,000 nits of brightness. Um, the movie industry alone is that driving factor for TVs to be able to show that HDR and that really poppy bright scenes. So we have a TV that's capable of 4,000 nits of brightness in the Q900. Our Q90 can do up to 2,000 nits, but the, the Q900 is capable of doing up to 4,000 nits of brightness. And it's the only TV I know of that is capable of that. But there are, are already over 70 titles going in that direction. Our competitive technology, OLEDs, are, are right now only capable of doing right around 1,000 nits of brightness. Otherwise, the, the organic material does break down way too fast if you get too much brighter than that. So as the industry moves in that range, we, we have to look um, at why we're doing things what we're doing, and this is part of the reason why we're going with the, the QLED technology instead. So that also leads me to the next point with Q Guarantee. So Q Guarantee allows us to offer a, a really solid guarantee for our customers. Because we're using inorganic materials, we also can guarantee with those customers that we will not burn in for the life of the product. These same customers that have bought TVs 8, 10, 12 years ago that are now buying TVs again also bought plasma TVs. And they also, you know, may have had that experience where, oh, man, I've heard about this burn in. Do I need to worry about that with this TV? Well, we guarantee you with our QLED TVs that it won't burn in for the life of that product. Yeah, we understand it has ambient mode. It's going to be a static image. We understand that more than 50% of people that buy TVs use them for gaming. We understand that people watch them for sports. They understand that people watch them to play, to play stocks and have static images on the screen. But yeah, Samsung guarantees that as long as you're not using this for commercial use for some reason, yeah, we guarantee you it's going to uh, not burn in for the life of that product. So that's, that's a very bold statement we can make uh, as a company to give that customer the peace of mind um, to know that they're going to get a TV that's going to last for them. Now, when we talk about tailoring that TV for their environment to make sure it's going to blast and make sure it's going to work for them, the adaptive brightness feature is a really great feature for that customer that just doesn't want to have to fiddle with the settings on the TV. Now, this allows our TV to really go in and adjust based upon the lighting conditions of their room. So what it will do is um, measure the brightness of the room and actually go through and adjust the brightness based upon the lighting conditions of the room. So you'll notice as I click through here, the image on the right is actually changing based upon the picture modes. However, if we go through and uh, the adaptive brightness will determine based upon the brightness of the room, it'll still adjust, but take into consideration the tone mapping of the images. So this sounds a lot like eco mode. However, it's completely different than eco mode because I know that's probably the big thing that everyone's thinking of right now. It's a different sensor. Uh, you can still defeat eco mode and not do anything with this. Um, eco mode is great at two things. It's great at power consumption or, or conserving power and saving money. Um, for one, it's, it's one, it is one of the first things I turn off on my TVs uh, for that one reason. Um, doesn't mean it's not a great feature. Uh, it's just one of those features that I don't personally use. Um, adaptive brightness, however, is a feature that I like. Um, it's one of those features that is going to be the, a I think it's a game changer for a customer that doesn't want to have to go through menus and adjust brightness and adjust um, picture settings and go to calibration day and night um, based upon how bright their room is. So we'll adjust the TV brightness up, up and down by 50 lux um, to uh, kind of meet what the brightness is in the room. It's a very subtle change. So it's not like if a cloud goes overhead that you're going to notice your TV, boom, go down in brightness. Um, so it's it's going to totally go down slowly. This is defeatable too. So if you do have some custom settings on the TV, you can completely adjust adjust it during the initial setup of the TV. All you have to do is turn off um, the intelligent mode from the initial setup of the TV. 
to, to make it go away. So the next thing we do is allow a lot of customization with our motion settings. So when we talk about motion on TVs, the first thing we offer is um, auto motion and turbulation, as well as black frame insertion. So we offer multiple ways to smooth out that motion. So black frame insertion is probably the most common way to smooth motion out, is by inserting a black frame in between the two real frames of uh, video that you see on the screen. Uh, the other thing is by inserting a frame between the two real frames um, to make it seem like there's a, a second for a third frame uh, between there. And then what we can do is we can actually do both of those to give a little bit smoother motion than that. However, some people feel like that's a little fake, which is why Samsung believes that it's up to that customer to choose what they want. We use an auto setting, which a lot of people tend to feel is okay for them. However, if they would like to customize it, we give them that ability. We give them the ability to customize it as well as turning it off in general, and they can watch it in their natural state. So customization allows them to turn it up or turn it down, whether they want less motion or um, more motion effects uh, within the TV itself. So it's just one of those things that Samsung wants to do to kind of allow that customer the customization effects that they can do for themselves. Um, to make sure their TV is customized for their own, t their own personal preferences. When we talk about gaming, as I mentioned, more than 50% of customers that are purchasing TVs have used it for gaming in one type or another, whether it's for them or for their children or for someone in the household, they are using that TV for gaming. So we've done a lot to enhance that gaming experience for that customer, whether it's to provide that really good input lag, uh, the, the partnerships we're doing with Xbox, that we offer that free sync capability, um, even the game motion plus to where it's almost like auto motion inside a game mode. Uh, my favorite thing is the auto game mode capability because this allows us to turn game mode on and off based upon whatever they're doing. So mom and dad might not know what um, what game or what setting they have on the TVs to turn game mode on and off. But little Timmy that thinks he's a professional gamer might think that, uh, or might be able to go through 17 different settings on the TV to turn game mode on. But that same Xbox or PlayStation console oftentimes doubles as the, as the uh, Blu-ray player in the household. So when mom and dad go to watch a game after, or a movie after the game was just done, they're oftentimes watching a movie with game mode on, which takes away from the picture quality. So the auto game mode feature allows that game, game console to talk to the TV and allows the TV to recognize whether or not that game is in the, t or whether or not you're putting a game inside of that game console or whether or not you're putting a movie in. And it turns the game mode on automatically or turns the game mode off automatically. So it's a nice feature to kind of give that added benefit to the, to the customer. And then in 2019, we added some picture quality and sound effects to enhance those things. So in the picture you see on the scene, you'll see that the fighter plane uh, did blow up some stuff. So you'll see the explosion, it gets enhanced um, on there, plus the sound does get enhanced on those, in those scenes, as well as the dynamic black equalizer. Um, it just kind of enhances the background images, what you see there. So that little totem pole you see over the guy's left shoulder, um, you, you can hardly see it in the image on the left where the, the dynamic black equalizer is off, but on the right side you can see it in the background. So it kind of helps people from being able to hide in the background of the images. It doesn't take into consideration the bright areas of the screen, so it's not just like turning up the brightness. It does just look at the, the blacker, darker areas of the scene and enhance the brightness. So beyond that, Samsung does focus a lot on design. Um, one of the things we do a lot with is ambient mode. Uh, this was a feature that went over really, really well with customers uh, last year. They liked the fact that um, they can conceal their TVs uh, when they weren't using them. Um, let's face it, as we said, customers are trending towards bigger screens. Um, that's why the frame TVs and um, all these uh, TVs are really becoming more popular because 
they like to be able to conceal them as well. They don't want them to look like a big TV in the room. They want them to look like a piece of art or a piece of their decor. So being able to customize that and make it be more of the piece of their room versus an object in the room is a big deal. So we added more decor options, uh, even a um, bunch of categories. So from the trends, the artworks and the wall themes, that's a big deal for, for customers that really are using this ambient mode feature because now we have so much more customization to it. Uh, when you pair their smartphone to it, it allows them to do so much more customization to it. So the decor lighting feature you see on the left side of the screen, you can use the remote control for the TV to turn on and off decor lighting with ambient mode. However, if you use the smartphone app, you can change the color of those lights. You can change the way they flash. You can change how fast they flash. You can change the pattern. You can change even multiple colors that come up on the screen. So you can do a lot of cool things with it. With the second one over there, the decor pattern, this allows us to even customize the ambient mode for people that aren't wall mounted. Because that was the thing that a lot of customers were bummed about last year is that there wasn't really a great solution for someone that wasn't wall mounting the display. So if it wasn't wall mounted, it kind of didn't have a solution. Um, so what they did was they allowed a customer to be able to take a picture of a couple of objects in their room and those little circles you see on the screen, those actually changed colors based upon the objects you're going to take pictures of. So it kind of mimics the colors that are in your room. So it helps blend into it. And on the right side, you see the photo mat. It allows you to take pictures or load pictures into the ambient mode and then have those pictures changed to watercolor images, to pen colors, or to other things um, to, to make it kind of different takes and different artistic um, patterns that you have, just to make the, the photos look a little different than what they would as normal photos themselves. Some other types of design elements are that invisible connection or is that invisible connection. Um, the One Connect box uh, does come with that invisible connection. So anytime you have the invisible connection, you do get the One Connect box. As I mentioned, it is on the Q90 and Q900. Uh, it would still be on the frame. So the frame does, does still come with that as well. Anytime you have the One Connect box and the invisible connection, that is always going to be capable of the no gap wall mount. So those kind of are all, always synonymous with each other. Um, and the no gap wall mounts is an accessory piece that you would have to purchase with the TV. Uh, unless you're talking about the frame, then that is something that is going to be included with it. Um, the 82 inch and above Q900, it does come with it as well. So the 82 inch, the 85 inch, and the 98 inch Q900, those three models do come with the, uh, the no gap wall mount as well. Uh, so all Q90s and the 65 and 75 inch Q900s are the ones that would need the no gap wall mount. Besides that, you'll we'll have the clean cable solution, which are the tracks that are going to go through the back of the TV and then down through the corresponding stands. Uh, these are really awesome um, to be able to conceal your wires um, for a tabletop stand mount. Um, just it's a really nice clean look, so as the wires aren't just hanging hanging down from the uh, bottom of the screen. Um, it's just one of those little things that kind of go a long way when you're trying to make the TV look nice um, when it's sitting on a tabletop stand. When we talk about the the frame, you know this is a great um, tagline, and it's kind of cheesy, but it's really true. It is art when it's off, and it's a TV when it's on. Um, you know, I don't like to put art on mine. I put family pictures on mine. Um, but I know a lot of people that do put art on theirs. They put a lot of the uh, nature scenes on them. Um, I know my boss puts um, Disney art on his. Um, but I, I put a lot of family pictures on mine, and every day I have them rotate to a new one. So it's just a really neat product that you can do a lot of stuff with, and it's really, really popular. So when it comes down to it, the frame does take away that big black box on the wall because it allows the TV to just be in art mode when the TV is not being played. And then when you're not in the room, it will be that black box uh, because it blacks out because of the two sensors, the, the motion sensor and light sensor that are built into the screens um, so that it recognizes that there's no one in the room and it's not going to constantly use that power for it. 
So the things that are new for this year on the frame, as I mentioned before, um, it is a quantum dot piece, so you're going to have a 100% color volume. You're going to get that better processor, so with the 4K AI upscaling, and because of those two things, you're going to get the better HDR experience. The uh, art store did obviously expand, and that's going to continuously improve. We're always expanding that art store. Um, that has expanded beyond over a thousand pieces now. Um, with the art store itself, it is a five dollars a month membership. Or for each individual piece, you can purchase them for $20. The collection um, that you see in the middle there, that is for when you upload your own pieces to it. So you can download artwork yourself off the internet um, or take pictures of your own artwork um, and upload that to the frame through the SmartThings app. Or you can use a USB and upload them to the uh, frame from the OneConnect box. There is a bunch of pieces of artwork that are inside the frame itself um, that come in there by default, uh, which are really cool pieces. There's actually quite a few of them that I really like on there. I always used to demonstrate, um, but Samsung Collection is a, a really nice, awesome collection as well. So when we talk about the art mode, um, you know, just notice that uh, on the left side of the screen, there's a difference um, based upon what resolutions you take the pictures in on how they're going to fit onto the frame. Uh, so just make sure you're paying attention to how and what resolution you're, you're taking the pictures in. Otherwise, you might have to, to format them to fit um, into those, those pictures themselves. Otherwise, there's lots of different uh, matting you can use. There's different colors of matting. There's the traditional matting that would fit over top of the picture, and then you can do the, the kind of the, the newer version or the, the new modern type of matting, which is the picture over top of the matting, which is more of that 3D type of type of look. So there's a bunch of different styles you can do with that. The art mode rotation is a new popular feature we added last year. Uh, it was really asked about for the 2017 frames to allow us to rotate the pictures through. So some people use these in showrooms a lot um, where every couple minutes they rotate a new picture through to kind of show that it's not just a piece of artwork um, to even menu boards. Uh, at, at places um, and, and restaurants and such. Um, you know, you can go from 10 minutes all the way to seven days. So it's a, a really cool thing. I do once a day myself at my house so that every day I've got a new picture up on my, uh, on my frame in, in, the, in my bedroom. So it's pretty cool. Now, when I talk about showcasing this, there is the stand mount here, the studio stand that you can get. Um, I will say that uh, the sensors that you are going to have on the TV are at the bottom. Uh, so I'm putting a highlighter here at the bottom of these. So if you do wall mount these, just make sure that you give enough clearance below the TVs so that those sensors can see um, both motion and light. So I would say, you know, an 8 to 10 inch um, is a good, good gap for that. Um, but just make sure you give enough room for the sensors to be able to see motion and see the light because those are where your two sensors are for for your motion and light when they are trying to read that information. So a lot of people try to tuck a sound bar up right up against these, and that's where the sensors aren't able to do their job as well to make sure when they turn off, the TV is always in art mode, um, <laughs> and customers are sometimes wonder why that's the case. Uh, the other things you can do with it, obviously it comes with the no gap wall mount and the invisible connection, but the uh, customizable frames are always a, a great thing to get with them. You do offer, or it is offered in a black, a white, a dark wood, and a light wood. A lot of people ask about the black, or the black because it is a black frame already, um, but you'll notice that there is a little bit of a lip to the frame itself. Um, so you'll see right in here how there is a little bit of a lip to it. When you add the black, it really makes it look like it is a picture frame. So it kind of stands out as it's not just a TV anymore. Once you, once you add that bezel to it, um, that bezel kit is kind of the, the thing that sets it off. So even if you like that black color, I highly suggest you get the black bezel kit to go with it because it's, it really is what sets it off. So when we talk about control, and how we're going to do controls with the TV, you have various options with uh, Samsung TVs. You know, we have 
uh, obviously our remotes that come with it with the three dedicated buttons on them there to open the apps for the Netflix, the Prime Video, and the Hulu. Uh, you obviously have this smart device um, or your cell phone, and then you have the RS-232 and IP control capabilities. So we have plenty of partners with support um, from Control 4 to RTI to AMX. Um, you know, the one thing I will point out with Control 4 is the 2019 drivers, to my knowledge, still are not published yet. Um, you know, I have not heard a final word when those are going to be done yet, but you can still manually update those to make those work uh, just fine on, on your controllers um, with the 2019 products. So don't steer away from the TVs just because the 2019 drivers aren't available. When it comes to the doing IP controls, obviously it's going to be much more in depth than using a remote control or even uh, the IP control because you're going to be able to get things like the specific volume numbers or uh, select what speakers you're going to want to do or even get the statuses um, of your TV state or um, what video state it is or wind to a specific point in a video, etc. Uh, there is the new ambient mode feature set in the IP controls. Um, you'll be able to get that type of information from the Samsung Custom Portal website, uh, which you'll see information about in a couple slides. So when you're doing um, when you're accessing the IP controls, just make sure you enable this. Um, this will do your wake on LAN for IP controls. Um, so just before you do anything, make sure you enter or you activate your IP controls. Um, so just follow these directions here. Um, so this will be that screenshot you were looking for earlier. Um, just make sure that uh, this is the, one of those first steps you're going to want to do before you actually ping to the TVs, uh, especially on like Control 4, um, to, to make sure you get that. Uh, when we're talking about RS-232 control, uh, most of the TVs do have the EX Link ports built into them. Uh, I believe the what is RU-7 series still needs the USB adapter to, to do RS-232, uh, so you'll need the USB adapter for that. Um, but just uh, just for the 232 control. We're talking calibrations. Um, probably the easiest way for Samsung TVs to calibrate is with CalMan and the AutoCal. Obviously, we can still calibrate with standard software, standard uh, colorometers and such. Uh, we do offer the white point balance um, inside of the TVs just like normal, um, you know, but if you're using the AutoCal, just make sure you have the right software, the right colorometer, the right pattern generator, and the right uh, serial cable that's compatible with all that information. Um, all those things compatible, uh, you should take no longer than 20 minutes to do an AutoCal. So it's a, a great solution to make sure that your customers are going to get the best possible picture out of their TV. Um, so it's, it's a really cool solution for us. Samsung.com slash custom install. So this is a great solution for you. Uh, this is where you can get very, very specific information about the TVs. Uh, it gives you a lot of hands-on um, information for the products, uh, whether it's the bolt patterns of the TVs, uh, how far specific TVs on specific sizes are from the left side of the TV to the bolt. So that when you're doing a pre-wire or a um, working with a builder on building a cabinet or building an overhang and such, uh, you know exactly how far you've got to go um, to make that work, and it's gonna gonna go exactly um, the way it needs to go. You have, can do CAD drawings and um, product information and all those different things. Samsung.com/slash/custom-install is your friend. To sign up, you go to the install portal. You just say where you get your information or where you're purchasing it from. Put your contact information down here. Uh, once you're registered, select Custom Integrator. Select your Resources tab. From there, it looks like you're shopping on a website. Um, you select what information you want, and you uh, would then select what product information you need. And then it literally is, if it's a download, you just download it right from there. Uh, otherwise, you can look at the images on your screen um, and get what the information you need off of that. So it's, it's a really cool portal. Um, we're trying to give you guys all the information you could possibly need without having to call, you know, like a 1-800 Samsung to get someone on the phone that's going to say, does your remote have batteries? Uh, is it plugged in? You know, something that's way beneath what you guys need for support. 
Um, and even beyond that, we even give you guys a custom install helpline uh, with our broad consulting group that they should be able to give you guys plenty of support um, from, you know, just pay attention to that they are Pacific time. They're located in San Diego. Um, so 8 a.m. through 6 p.m. Pacific time. Um, Jonathan and Brian are great, great guys. They they will speak your language. They could help troubleshoot EX link, control IP. Um, so all those different things. They have plenty of expertise in this war in this field. They have direct uh, contact with the uh, control partners that we work with, um, so they know the problems before typically we do, and how the solution is going to come about. Um, so they're probably a better contact than, than us, to be honest, um, just because they're they're more integrated with that in the business. All right. So last thing we'll talk about is our quick two-step step-up strategy. This is really just so, so it gives you a quick way to, to go through our lineup. Um, without having to go through every step-up feature within our lineup, it gives two things to, to worry about. So when we talk about our RU7 series product, there are two things. It is accurate color for normal TV viewing, and it gives a one remote experience. So that one remote experience means that when you plug the TV into a cable box, a Apple TV box, and a um, Blu-ray player, the Samsung TV remote will recognize that you plugged all those devices in. It will name the inputs and it will control those devices when you're on those sources. So you don't have to bring out all those different remotes to control them. So it gives that one remote experience, so you don't have to have multiple remotes. Obviously, that's probably not gonna be something you're gonna utilize very often, because hopefully you're gonna use a control system most of the time, and that's not gonna be something that's gonna be needed. However, for that one time that it might, need, might be needed where you're doing a smaller job, where there's a control system that's not gonna be there, just know that this is a capability. Technically, that's a capability of all of our TVs uh, from the RU7 and above, but it's something that we just brought down to the RU7 series because last year this was not a feature that was offered. So when we step from the RU7 to the RU8, we're going to get better color and better motion. So when I say better color, we step from over 16 million colors that the TV can show to over a billion shades of color. So it's actually technically over a billion additional shades of color, uh, but it's a billion shades of color that we like to set. And then when we talk about motion, we go from a, a 120 motion rate to a 240 motion rate on the TV. So it just improves the motion for someone playing video games, watching sports, watching action movies, these type of things. That RU8 series is a much better option than the RU7 series for them. When we go from the RU8 series to the Q60, this is where we implement quantum dots. So we're going to get that 100% color volume. That's where that color is really true to life. Plus, we're going to get that design element of making your TV appear like a chameleon. It blends into that environment. That, that image on the right is a great representation of how this ambient mode feature really works in, in real life. You mount the TV on the wall, and maybe you have a panel like that where you can see the lines. They're going to go up and down the wall. Those lines can continue through the TV. And that's actually an image of an ambient mode where it's shining a light to make it look like it's a light on the wall. But actually that light is the light on the TV trying to appear like it's a light. So it's, a, it's just a neat version of an ambient mode option. So from the Q60 to the Q70, you learned earlier, we offer a full array at a Q70. So that's going to be the next step up for the Q60 to the Q70. Because we're lighting from directly behind the object, it gives us much better contrast. Because we have better contrast, it also in turn is going to give us better HDR experience. Um, and that better HDR experience is going to be the other portion of our step-up feature story. Better HDR experience, better full array experience through the contrast. So those are the two step-up features from the 60 to 70. From the, 60 to, from the 70 to the 80, we have that better panel design. So now we have that anti-reflectivity technology with that ultra black elite. I, like I said, that's by far one of my favorite features, especially since it's the easiest thing to show. It's, it's so easy to show because literally you just turn the TV off, especially if you have a TV next to it, because you can turn both of them off and you can see the difference. It's, it's a demonstrable thing that's easy to tell. The other thing is the ultra viewing angle. 
the other portion of that new panel design um, it allows you to see from every seat in the house off access viewing gets improved with everything the q80 and above when we step from 80 to 90 this is where those design elements come into play with the invisible connection the one connect box as well as it gets our best version of that full array so highest version of the full array most zone control best contrast story that we can talk about there from the 90 to the 900 now we have the highest resolution because we offer that 8k we get four times the resolution of 4k at 33 million pixels that gives us that perfect clarity that we want that best possible image quality that we can possibly ask for and then on top of that we have the best HDR experience as I said the Q900 is the only one that's going to be able to hit 4,000 nits so it's the best possible HDR experience we offer now there is some additional step features that we we like to talk about smart things dashboard is a good one uh, as well as the free sync for the RU8 series um, and obviously smart things is a little bit of a competitor for you guys since uh, it is a integration type of thing um, but I, I know there's just some, been some times when the smart things is been utilized by, by some custom integrators. So I just want to make sure that you know that it is the dashboard built in on the RU8 series and above. The no gap wall mount is capable on the Q90 and above. Um, so that's a, a good feature there. And the last thing I want to mention is that the, that we did have an app launch yesterday. Um, or actually, I'm sorry, Monday, there was a very new and exciting feature for us. So we had the Apple TV app that's an exclusive for Samsung for a short time that we now have active on our TVs. So all you have to do is update your, new, your 2019 TVs and you will see that the Apple TV app is on there. So it's almost like having an Apple TV um, box on your TV as well as the capability of doing AirPlay 2. So you can now mirror your iOS device to your TV. So it's a really awesome thing that we can talk about, especially if you see a customer that offers a, that has a, an uh, iOS device in their house, um, because they, they more than likely have movies on their uh, iTunes library that you can sign into on that app and be able to see them straight from the Samsung TV. But, with that being said, that is what I've got. Uh, if there's any questions, I will be happy to answer them. All right. We definitely have some questions for you. Okay. First question comes in is about uh, the Q900 series. Um, are any of these inputs on the One Connect for the Q900 going to support HDMI 2.1, or will there be an upgrade path to 2.1 inputs uh, down the road? So there's going to be various things that uh, that are going to be supported from 2.1. So 2.1 is going to be thinking think of 2.1 as a house, and uh, there's a lot of features from 2.1 that we are going to support and uh, think of those things as like the rooms that's in the house. Um, we will support a lot of those rooms, uh, but not necessarily every room. So uh, if they mean like eARC, yes, we'll support eARC. If they mean auto lat low latency mo mode, yes, we'll support that. If they are talking about 4K gaming at 120 frames per second, yes, we support that. Those are all uh, attributes of the HDMI 2.1. Um, that we do support, but unfortunately, there's not a, a set standard on how to test to be fully approved for 2.1 yet. So, no one can technically be fully supported by 2.1 yet. So, we can only say that we support certain aspects of that at this time. Okay. Are we confident that we're going to be able to accept um, 8K, 8K source material at 30 frames or 60 frames? AK at 60, yes. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, the next question that comes in is about uh, the high-res photos that we used on the presentation here. Uh, does the dealer have access through the, the custom installation portal that you just 
uh, had up a few moments ago. Does the dealer do the dealers have access to those high res photos and logos and things like that to use in their own ads and catalogs? I'm sorry, I couldn't get off mute there. Um, I'm not sure what the question. Like I, I don't follow the question quite well enough. Some of the high res photos. I think when this question popped up, you were on the frame, and there were a bunch of really cool pictures in your presentation in your slide deck. Mm -hmm. So he wants to use those for um, the website, their ads, catalogs, etc. I would have to steer them towards somebody else. I couldn't answer that, so I would I would honestly ask that they email you, and you could send that to me. All right, we can and just email the request. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll do that, and we'll put them in touch with you and with Neil. Yeah, that that'd be the best way to do it because I can. Okay, I mean, a lot of times that's possible, but uh, sometimes those. Uh, those type of things are licensed to just us for just presentation material. So I don't know who has license rights for what on the images though. So. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, the next question that comes up, any, anything on the roadmap for the PlayStation view streaming app is to be added as one of the tiles that can be added to the, um, to the menu. Uh, to my knowledge, I don't know of anything. Um, all of our apps are built by the actual owners of the apps. Um, so anybody can build an app for our platform. It's not us that actually does that. Um, so any, any of the apps you see are actually built by those companies. Uh, we just uh, will review them and make sure they don't um, violate any of our terms and such, and then we put them up on our platform. All right, the next question that comes up, um, do we know if the Hulu app supports the Hulu Live TV service, or is that a separate uh, separate app? Uh, I, I know it supports one of them, but not the other. I believe it's just the Hulu. Uh, I believe they haven't got the Hulu Live on the app yet. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of confusion on that, some of these new yeah. versions of these apps. I use a Roku at home, and it's yeah. I routinely sign up for the wrong thing. <laughs> there's like three versions of every app. It's it's maddening. Okay, it, it is, and it's uh, and it's like when when one provider offers two different apps, it's it's so crazy for that. Like HBO and HBO Go, and it's like I which one do I have? Yeah, um, or one of them is one of them is Go, and one of them is Now. And yeah, that's so, it. yeah, I have to remember which one which one that is that I'm subscribed to. Okay. Um, all right. So Jack was asking for some questions about, and I think you just covered this toward the end, so you, you may have addressed this question. But the Apple TV app. Yeah. Um, can you review the the feature set that's on that? So that actually is a great point because I don't know if I actually mentioned that the uh, the Apple TV app is going to be supported all the way down to our RU7 series product. So all of our TVs that I covered today, that Apple TV app is available on. And to my knowledge, even our 2018 products, that even got updated on those as well. I know our QLEDs, that got updated on. I don't know how far down our lineup because I haven't seen the confirmation on how far down it got, got updated to. Uh, unfortunately, I have a 2017, not an 18, so I don't know yet. Okay. Well, we'll definitely I have mean, to do actually, some follow-up. Actually, I haven't checked on my frame yet, so I could, I could check on that. We'll have to do some follow-up and play with the Apple TV app. Um, yeah, it's, it's got... really cool. It looks exactly like an Apple TV. Okay. We've got the well. You've been here. We've got the Q900 here. Yeah. So we can play with that. Oh, hey. Oh, speaking of that, one of the things I wanted to touch on in this call. So an interesting new wrinkle um, since last night. Uh, we found out that Oversee now supports uh, remote monitoring and remote uh, management of the new Samsung series. So the new product that we just reviewed today. So. Based on what I was told, I talked to Eugene Hoover at, at Snap AV, who's the, one of the heads of the Oversea Department, and what he told me was that, uh, let me see.
I apologize. I didn't have this really prepared and I don't have slides. Uh, he said there's a pairing process that is required that will involve authorization, um, authorizing the connection from the TV interface. Uh, we'll be able to do remote reboots and we'll be able to do uh, real-time monitoring and diagnostics. The current input that's selected, the current resolution, refresh rate, aspect ratios, etc. So if uh, if a customer is calling their integrator saying, "Hey, my, you know, the uh, I'm only seeing the center third, or you know, everything is small," you can see that someone went into the menu and put in a, a letterbox and pillar bars or something like that, and somehow they got they got it stuck, and you'll be able to walk them through it by viewing remotely what their uh, what their setup looks like. That's really cool. We're really we're really excited about that. So for those of you who use uh, Samsung TVs, obviously you're on the call. And for those of you who are also using the Oversee uh, remote management platform, um, look for over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be doing a really short video as a supplemental to the webinar series. We probably won't do a dedicated webinar on it, but we will record a short video and we'll post that to uh, our channel. And then also we'll send that out with our weekly uh, Samsung uh, pricing promo sheets. So as you as you know, we um, we send out a uh, we send out a sheet every week um, that highlights the products that are coming coming onto and coming off of promo. So that way you know when is the right time to buy which models or when is the right time to uh, have that conversation with your client to maybe light a fire under them to say, hey, this, these products are going to be on sale the next couple of weeks, whatever. So uh, we usually put some links on the document. One of the links we put on there is this custom installer website program and the Braun consulting number. So now we're going to have this uh, new video as well once it's prepared. Speaking of that, Kyle, we had a question about the uh, the correct support number. So uh, one of the dealers said he has a support number of 866-208-2911. And then you just popped up the Braun consulting number. Can you back up a couple slides? Thank you. So this is the correct number for our channel to call on a day-to-day -day basis? That's the number I have. I don't know any other number besides this one. Okay. There was a number, and I remember I always pulled it off of Neil's signature. And we would give it out regularly. And then one day we got feedback from a dealer. He's like, hey, you know that number you always give me? It goes to the Samsung commercial team, and they always have to transfer me. It's like, so... <laughs> uh, it might have been. Please stop um, giving that number out. <laughs> yeah, it might have been. We didn't know it was in Neil's signature. Yeah. So. Yeah. But anyway, so now we've got this number. Uh, I took a screenshot of it, and, I, and we're going to make sure that cool. it's shared. And we're going to make sure that everyone's all all these documents are updated, so everyone knows um, this number. And they're going to be able to call and get. So, what I had forgotten was that you mentioned this in our previous sessions is that Braun has uh, significant experience with third party control. So, like you were saying yeah. earlier in the training, this is better than calling the Samsung number and, and talking to a person who's essentially reading off of a flowchart. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've spent hours talking to Jonathan Braun specifically, and um, he's. A very, very smart individual. Nice. Okay. Let me see. I'm looking for other questions. So Paul's asking about the webinar for those who are not able to attend the session today. Uh, Paul, we'll definitely, we're definitely recording this, and we'll, we were going to be sharing this. Um, It'll probably be seven to ten days before we get this posted, so you'll you'll see a link uh, as a follow up to everyone who attended the session today, and then also we're just going to start including it in our uh, Samsung weekly uh, mail out. By the way, if anyone on the call is not receiving the Samsung pricing mail out, uh, reach out to us and we'll make sure that you're added to that distribution list. It's um it's like the most crucial piece of information that you can have to know when things are going on and when things are going off promo. So we, um, it's probably, oh, I don't know. It's probably one out of every four calls is to check pricing on uh, one of our two significant brands of televisions that we sell. Okay. 
I think that's about it. Hey, I've got a quick question for you since we've got you on the line. There is a company that claims to prepare name brand TVs for outdoor use. Obviously, you know who we are and you know that we've got a brand of outdoor TVs. Uh, what is Samsung's stance on that company that claims that they're weatherizing name brand TVs? Some of them are yours. Uh, I would not know a response to that at this point. Unfortunately, I would have to direct you to somebody that uh, actually has a, has a response, to be honest. That's sure. the first I've heard of it. Okay. Um, Jim is asking about the size slide. I don't know which one that is. Jim, I don't understand your question. Oh, that was it. He asked for the different models that have different sizes. You just passed it. There we go. Hold on. What was that one? No. So the only one I think of for this Oh, the new frame, um, the new, the larger size frame. Also, we mentioned that we have a new frame size this year, correct? Yeah, I, I did not mention that actually. I, we have the 43, 49, uh, 55, and 65 for this year. Yeah, so we've never had a 49 before. So now we've got uh, that fourth size. All right. So, right. Oh, yeah, go back. Is it, was it that last, that slide? Nope. Go back. That one? Right there, I think that's it. This one? No. Well, I'll leave it right here. So this is everything that yeah. we've got. So we've got QLED in uh, uh, 8K starts at 65 and goes to 98. And the 4K start at, what size does the 4K start at? Uh, 40, I want to say 40. Okay. Um, he said it's the one right before the cat. It's the one that he wants to see. One right before the cat. So that one. That one. There you go. Oh, this was the 8K. Okay. And then up in the top left corner, it shows which sizes, and then it's black or grayed out uh, the smaller sizes. Because we don't we don't necessarily need 8K in a and a 43, because I don't know that we're going to be sitting two and a half inches away from no. the TV to take advantage of mm -hmm. that. Okay. Um, <laughs> or Jim replies, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks, Jim. You're very welcome. All right. I think that's it. Um, what was the other question that we had that came through? Um, enabling IP controls. We reviewed that. Um, oh, I know the other question that came through. Um, direct infrared control. So like an old-fashioned uh, URC-style remote or uh, the cable box remote or a TiVo remote, things like that. So we've been hearing oh, yeah. some still people have. asking questions about taking the TV out of Bluetooth mode so that it can be operated by a third-party IR line-of-sight remote. There's no such thing as taking it out of Bluetooth mode. They still use IR controls like normal. Okay, perfect. Like I... Like if you any, if you had an old school steps? standard, no, no, there's nothing you have to do to the TVs. So if you have an old school like IR remote, you can just point it at the TV and do it just fine, just like a normal okay. remote. And they just pick one of the common Samsung code sets. The Samsung code sets are still the same from. Yeah, from so region. more than likely, if if it's not working on the code that they're using, they're just not using the right code set. 
I think what maybe some of this feedback might be from people trying to learn a remote, and obviously you can't learn a Bluetooth remote. <laughs> so yeah, you have to yeah, pick no. one of the code sets out of the library. Seems like that's yes, gonna be exactly. Nice. Because the only thing that the the Bluetooth remotes will send out of the remotes through IR is the power. Nice. Okay. Um, the next question that popped up here immediately is where on the sets is the IR window? So it varies based on the set. Okay. On the frame, it's on the bottom, right? Next to the motion sensor and the light ambient light sensor? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then uh, when you mentioned hanging a frame, uh, you mentioned leaving some space so that uh, the, the ambient light sensor and the motion sensor can, can operate. And I can speak to yeah. that because what, the entire time we've had our frame set up here in the Michigan office, we didn't have a spot on the wall where we could hang it. So we had it on a tabletop stand and we had a soundbar right underneath it because we we're also demonstrating a soundbar. And it was, we had to move the soundbar in order to, tr in order to get the ambient or the, the light sensor to uh, change the light level of TV, which we tried to demonstrate. We would turn the lights off and watch it dim and then turn the lights back on and watch it come back up. So it was kind of one of our more effective uh, demonstrations of why a frame is different than a normal TV that can display artwork. So we had to move that soundbar every single time. So, all right. Yeah, that, and that's the that's the important thing is that just it's one of the things I just like to drive home is that just don't mount a soundbar right up against it. Leave a few inches below it. I mean, I think I said six to eight, which is probably an exaggeration, um, but a few inches below so that it can sense the motion and sense the the light from below the TV is is the important thing. Okay, perfect. All right, and I apologize if it sounds like we're throwing pots and pans around here. We've got uh, we're receiving a pallets of Samsung TVs off the dock right now, uh, a few feet away from where I'm sitting. All right, I'm, I'm I sure think it's no different it. around me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's uh, good times. All right, I think we've we've gotten all the questions. If anyone has any additional questions, really quickly, uh, please feel free to type them into the questions tab. Um, we've gone over a little bit, so Kyle, thank you for your time today. Um, and I want to thank everyone for, for jumping on the call with us today and taking the time to learn a little bit more about this new Samsung lineup. Uh, some exciting things. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to go ahead and stop the recording now because I'm going to say something that I probably shouldn't say uh, on the recording. Um, I heard a rumor that's <clears throat> basically more than a rumor that we're going to have a new uh, One Connect uh, friendly Versa box that we can flush behind behind a television, and it'll be uh, UL UL listed, and it'll have J box connection, so you can put power right in it. So we're going to be able to have a spot where we can put um, a One Connect box directly behind a television, so we don't have to worry about cutting a giant hole in a wall or um, uh, like opening up with a jigsaw. You know, any of the previous smaller one uh, s previous smaller Versa boxes that where the One Connect wouldn't fit in there. So I just heard that last night, but again, that's total, you know, we, um, we're not supposed to talk about it. Uh, the question came up, the One Connect boxes, are they smaller than last year's model? Well, on some of the models, they're definitely smaller because on many of the models, the One Connect boxes have disappeared. Kyle, I'll let you elaborate on that. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be, uh, that'd be accurate. So the this Q7, uh, for, to the Q70, it disappeared. Uh, however, the Q uh, the Q90 and it has the same size as what last year would have. Um, the Q900, however, is larger than what the Q90s would have. It's the same size as what the Q900 had last year. Um, it's just due to the size that the power supply um, for that TV is going to be larger. Um, so it just needs a larger one connect box to support the the power needed to display the the TV brightness. Okay, and what about the frames this year? The frames are going to be comparable to what the Q9s were last year. Um, same, same as what the the Q7s and all the frames were last year, actually, as well. Okay, perfect. So we have only three series that have the One Connect: the Q9, 108K. 
the Q90 flagship 4K and the frame, correct? That is absolutely correct. Perfect. Okay. Let me see if we have any other additional questions. I think I think we're good. Kyle, once again, I want to thank you for your time today. Um, we've got some uh, follow-up. I have a, a quick email I want to shoot over to you. Um, everyone, thank you for taking the time to join us today. If you have if you have anyone on your team um, who you would like this uh, to see this presentation, um, look in your Samsung pricing and availability email that comes out every week. Uh, we're going to have a link to this webinar in it as soon as it's published. It may be published for next Monday's uh, distribution of that price sheet. Otherwise, feel free to reach out to me and um, we'll also have it available on the YouTube channel very soon. So, and again, same with that uh, that oversee integration video. We're going to uh, prepare something in the, in the coming days and get that up as well. So, thank you everyone for your time. We're going to go ahead and end the presentation now.